Hello, Kanisha here from The Art of Applying. I'm really excited today because I have an entire application from an applicant to the Kennedy School. They're a joint degree applicant, MPP, MBA. And we have their entire application, or just their, or rather when I say entire application, that's not true because I will not be reviewing the CV, which looked great, by the way. Um, I'm just going to be reviewing uh, his answers to his essays um, and posting my comments and edits for for him but as well as for everyone else who's applying okay so first we'll start with the short answer questions what websites do you read uh, to follow matters pertaining to policy issues and news you're interested in we have the diplomat.com and then it just says blogs and Facebook pages of various Thai politicians that is very interesting to me so the first thing I would say is my recommendation is for this question is to actually write in full sentences rather than just rattling off a list of random things. I would like to know um, what do you read at thediplomat.com, what kinds of articles, who are some of your favorite authors, how often do you read The Diplomat, and then I want to know what these blogs and Facebook pages are of these various Thai politicians. Um, what, are their, what parties are they from, what are their political leanings when you read these blogs, what are you reading, what are you looking for, what kind of information are you reading, and uh, what's happening at their Facebook pages. That's really interesting to me that you included a Facebook page in this answer. I think that's really cool, but I need you to be more specific. So to, in order for this uh, question to really work for you and not just be sort of random, I would want to know the actual blogs and what's happening at the Facebook pages, how frequently you're reading these sites, and when you go. All right, and then what print publications do you read? Um, and all you wrote is The Economist. You put an S on the end for some reason. There, there's, there's not an S, it's just The Economist. Um, but I wanna know how frequently do you read The Economist? What are you reading in The Economist? What kind of news are you interested in? What kind of issues are you interested in? I know the question doesn't ask all that, but to me, for this question to make sense and for it to be helpful, I would want, to, and when I say helpful, I mean for it to demonstrate more about your application and who you are and your candidacy, I would want to know the answers to those questions. So you got got some work to do on these first two questions. Let's keep going. Essay 1. The HKS motto, evoking our presidential namesake, is ask what you can do. Please share with the admissions committee your plans to create positive change through your leadership and service and how an MPP slash MPA2 from HKS will prepare you to do so. And they give you a 500 word limit. The first thing I'm going to check for is word count. Make sure we're in the word limit. Okay, we're at 715. So this candidate needs to cut down on uh, 215 words. Let's see if I can help him. On a rainy day in August of 2003, my parents dropped me off. Okay, so this is in the present tense, but it's in when. Okay, let me, I'll keep going. My parents dropped me off at the Bangkok International Airport as I embarked um, on my journey to the U.S. for education. With tears rushing down her face, my mother said, Don't forget to come home, my son, not knowing when she will be with her 14 year, 14 year old son again. Okay. I said, of course I will, holding my tears as I wave goodbye. Okay, we got an interesting introduction. Okay, so he's 14. All right. Even as a teenager, I clearly see the differences between the U.S. and Thailand. Not only um, did I observe the infrastructure difference, such as the quality of the interstates and sanitation, but I also... Uh, realized the difference in the mindset between the people of these two nations. As I go through college and my current career, I was exposed... Okay, so you're having a lot of issues with tense, my friend, with past and present. So I'm going to help you clean this up and get it either all past tense, all present tense, or just be consistent. So let's keep going. As I go through college and my current career, I was exposed to more differences. Some are for the better and some are for the worse. Okay, so we'll just say some for the better and some for the worse. In the United States, I experienced a, uh, I experienced 
what it is like living in a developed country. There are many things. I want to know where you went in the U.S. The U.S. is a huge place with a lot of different places, so I want to know what state you were in the U.S. Um, and city. There are many things that I would like to bring back to Thailand. This aspires, okay, okay. This as, uh, hmm, I'm not sure what you mean here. This aspire my long-term career goal. Okay, so maybe, I'm not sure what, let me say, let me say, we're gonna write clarify here. It'll be a note to myself as well as to the applicant, which is to go back home and serve as a policymaker. There are three main issues that I am passionate about. Economics policy, LGBT rights, and tax reform. How interesting. I want to know how all these three come together. Economics policy. So this is interesting, this use of a bold heading. I have never used this with my clients. I kind of like it, but I don't know. Oh, actually, you'll be submitting a, a PDF. You'll be uploading a PDF. So I actually do think this bolding could work for you. So I'm not going to change it quite yet, if, and I may not change it at all. It is quite painful to hear about what is going on in Thailand via international media. It is also embarrassing to get asked what is going on with your country from my coworkers. For example, the disastrous policy to buy rice from the farmers twice the market rate and withdrawing rice from the world market. Okay, the government hoped this would force up the world rice price and later cash in by selling the rice inventory at a profit. This theory didn't work as planned because there are other countries that can supply the world's rice demand. As a result, the government was forced to stockpile 18 million tons, costing the country $15 billion or 4% of GDP. I did not know that. That is amazing. As a policymaker, I want to ensure to make, okay, I want to ensure to make sensible economics policy to ensure the growth of policy. Okay, so let's say I want to just make, I want to make sensible economics policy to ensure the growth of Thailand. The HKS classroom experience will help me learn how to effectively analyze policy before it is implemented. In addition, I am specifically excited about the spring exercise, which will allow me to use all the concepts introduced to me in the classroom and put it to use with a current pol okay, put it to use, let's see, in current policy challenges. All right, LGBT rights. Another issue that is personally close to my heart is the rights for the LGBT community in Thailand. While Thailand is pretty tolerable, okay, tolerant toward towards the LGBT community compared to the region as a whole, there there are works to be done. There is a lot of work that remains to be done. There are currently no hate crime okay laws that cover LGBT people and same-sex couples um, cannot, uh, cannot yet be legally married. I am planning to go back to Thailand as a proud gay person and be a part of the change in LGBT related policies. I am very excited to be involved with the CAR Center by being a part of the Sexuality, Gender, and Human Rights Study Group. I am also hoping to leverage the resources of the center to work on a research project. I want to know, tell us about this research project. Tax reform. Lastly, I want to go back and help reform um, tax policy in Thailand to make it more fair for the lower and middle classes. I have been involved with the IRS VITA, Volunteer Income Tax Assistance, for the past three years, helping file numerous low-income family tax returns. It is heartbreaking to see many of those families pay higher effective tax rates than various wealthy public figures. For example, while Mitt Romney's 2011 effective to federal tax rate is 15%, a median income family with an 80000 gross income can pay up to 20% in the effective tax rate. Even though my experience is in the U.S., Thailand's tax policy policy and exemption clauses are very similar. I want to go back to Thailand and help bridge this gap. Okay. It has been 10 years since that rainy day in 2003. While I occasionally go back and visit, my mother is still waiting for the day that I will quote unquote be home. But before I do so, I want to make sure that I am equipped with, po with uh, a policy education so I will be Okay, you already used the word equipped once, so I'll just say, well, I will be able to make positive changes in my home, in my country. Mom, please wait a little longer. I am about to be home. Okay, so that's the first essay. 
Um, let me see. My overall impression is that I'm a little distracted by the um, by the grammatical mistakes. Um, so one thing we want to do is just clean those up so that it reads and flows really well. Uh, one thing you can do is have a friend who has really strong English speaking and writing skills review your essay you could, or read it out loud to you and help you see where you need to fix some of those mistakes. I'll, um, I'll go through it probably again and try and help you with that. Um, I would actually, especially because you're short on words, I would lop off the introduction and the conclusion and just leave that out because we really want to learn. It's a nice gesture, but we don't really have time for that introduction or that conclusion. I need to learn about you moving forward. And that brings us down to 578, and we still need to get rid of 78 words as well as provide some elaboration in some areas. Um, so I would even say, even as a teenager, studying abroad in the United States, and then here, I actually want you to tell us, tell us the state and city, because that's, that's helpful. I clearly, let's see, I could clearly see the differences between the U.S. and Thailand. I would say the stark differences. Not only did I observe the infrastructure difference, differences, so here, instead of saying the word differences again, I would, I would go to a thesaurus and I would use a different word to add variation to this, to add variation, because we keep saying the word differences, such as the quality of the interstates and sanitation. But I also realized the difference and the mindset between the people of these two nations, okay? And here you're gonna have to you're gonna have to specify what that difference you noticed was. As I go through college and my current career, um, I would say I would literally say my current career as a, and then tell us what your current career is. I was exposed to more differences, some for the better and some for the worse. In the United States, I experienced what it is like living in a developed country. There are many things that I would like to bring back to Thailand. So I would take out this sentence and just start right here and say, there are many things about the United States that I would like to bring back to Thailand. Um, this, I think this means, you mean inspires, that's what you meant. This inspires, not aspire. This inspires my long-term career goal, which is to go back home and serve as a policymaker. Okay, I would want you to be more specific. In what capacity do you want to, like what, what area of government do you want to serve in? And if you can, it would be great if you could give us an idea of what you want to do right after school, what you want to do a few years after school, and what you want to do as your career for the long, long term. There are three main issues that I am passionate about. Economics, policy, LGBT rights, and tax reform. Um, okay. Economics, policy. It is quite painful to hear about what is going on in Thailand via international media. Okay, I'm going to delete this, give you some more room, and say it is embarrassing to get asked what is going on with your country from my co-workers for example the disastrous policy to buy rice from the farmers at twice the market rate and then and withdrawing rice from the world market okay this is not a full sentence so we want to say an example of a disastrous policy was when the Thai government decided to buy rice from the farmers at twice the market rate and withdraw rice from the world market. The government hoped that this would force up the world rice price and later cash in by selling, okay, and allowing them to later cash in by selling the rice inventory at a profit. This theory didn't work as planned because there are other countries that can supply the world's rice demand. As a result, the government was forced to stockpile, this is crazy to me, 18 million tons, costing the country $15 billion or 4% of GDP. As a policymaker, I want to make sensible economics policy to ensure the growth of Thailand. 
Um, the HKS classroom experience will help me learn how to effectively analyze policy before it is implemented. Um, I would be more specific here on what about the HKS um, experience you are looking forward to, and you can find information about that by um, uh, reading student blogs, reading admissions material that the Kennedy School publishes, um, if you're able to attend any admissions events, or if you were able to, you'll learn more about that. Um, but you want to be more specific about what about the classroom experience you're looking forward to. In addition, I'm specifically excited about the spring exercise. That's good, nice and specific, which will allow me to use all the concepts introduced to me in the classroom and put it to use in current policy challenges. Okay, if you could, it would be great if well, no, that's good. Let's keep going. LGBT rights. Another issue that per that is personally close to my heart is the rights for the LGBT community in Thailand. While Thailand is pretty tolerant towards the LGBT community compared to the region as a whole, there is a lot of work that remains to be done. Let's just go right into that. Um, there are currently no hate crime laws that cover LGBT people, and same-sex couples cannot yet be legally married. I am planning to go back to Thailand as a proud gay person and be a part of the change in LGBT-related policies. I'm very excited to be involved with the CAR Center by being a part of the Sexuality, Gender, and Human Rights Study Group. I'm also hoping to leverage the resources of the center to work on a research project. All right, great. Tax reform. Lastly, I want to go back and help reform tax policy in Thailand to make it more fair for the lower and middle classes. I've been involved with the IRS Vita for the past three years, helping file numerous low-income Sorry for all the little chirping on my phone, y'all. Helping file numerous low-income family tax returns. It is heartbreaking, okay, let's see, to see many of those families pay higher ta effective tax rates than various wealthy public figures. And we don't need this example with Mitt Romney. Um, Even though my experience is in the U.S., Thailand's tax policy and exemption clauses are very similar. I want to go back to Thailand and help bridge this gap. All right, let's see how many words we're at now. Okay, now we're still at 522 words. My goal would be to get this down to about, um, for you, would be to get it down to about 450 words, which would give you some words to elaborate in those places where I want you to elaborate. Or honestly, I want you to get down to 400 words so that you can elaborate on the places where I actually want you to elaborate. So let's see if I can delete 122 words for you. Um, even as a teenager studying abroad in the United States, I could clearly see the stark differences between the U.S. and Thailand. Um, let's see. I wonder if we can get rid of this whole first paragraph. Actually, I think so. You can start, like, here. You can just go right into there. Even as a teenager, uh, let's just say as a teenager studying abroad in the United States, I could clearly see the stark differences between the U.S. and Thailand. There are many things about the United States that I would like to bring back to Thailand. This inspires my long-term career goal, which is to go back home and serve as a policymaker. And this is great that you tell us your long-term career goal, but I would like to also know your short-term and medium-term career goals and how the Kennedy School will help prepare you for your short-term and medium-term career goals and serve as a policymaker. Let's see how many words we're at now. Great, we're at 461. Let's see if I can help you get rid of 61 more words so that you have 100 words to work with and elaborate on the places where I really want you to elaborate. Um, let's see. It is embarrassing to get asked what is going on with your country from my coworkers. An example of a disastrous policy, let's say, of a recent disastrous policy was when the Thai government decided to buy rice. Okay. Um, let's just, let's skip that part and just go um, into there. Mm-hmm. Let's see where else we can delete. Let's go down to LGBT. Okay, I don't know if there's anything I want to delete from there. Let's look at tax reform. Okay. 
Okay. Well, actually, I really like everything that I that remains behind. We, we're at 446, but I love a challenge, so I'm going to still keep looking for where I can delete 46 words to give you 100 words where you can still elaborate on the rest of your stuff where I really want you to focus. Um, why don't we say this? Start here. There are many things about the United States that I would like to bring back to Thailand. Um... Actually, I wonder if I could say my long-term career goal is to go back home and serve as a policymaker. Let's see. Hmm. What does the question say? Ask your plans to create positive change. Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can do that. So I know it jumps right in, it doesn't have a really pretty introduction, but it gives you lots of space to write about what really matters. You're at 402 words. Let's get rid of two words. Um, my long-term career goal is to go back to Thailand and serve as a policymaker in the areas of economics policy. Let's see if policymaker is one word or two words. Ah, it looks like it is... Here, it looks like two words. Let's look at if HKS uses policymaker as one word or two words. <gasps> it's one word. Well, the, the Kennedy School uses it as one word. So that saves us on some words if we make policymaker. If we make policymaker one word, awesome. Where else do we see it? Okay, we see it probably throughout the... Great. So now we're at... Now we're at 400 words, and you have now 100 words to elaborate on the places where I actually want you to elaborate. And if you can, I would add a one to two sentence conclusion to wrap it all up. Wonderful, I really enjoyed reading that. Let's go on to the next essay. Essay number two, describe an example of commitment to a goal from your work, academic, or personal life. This does not need to be dramatic or even successful, but should speak to your capacity for sustained effort. Please focus on one specific example rather than a summary of the resume slash CV we have asked you to provide. And we're at a 500 word limit. First thing I like to do is see how many words, where we are. Okay, 527, so we need to at least get 27 words out and maybe more, depending on if I want him to add in some more content. Are you gay? My mother asked me when she heard I was being bullied at school. As a confused seventh grader, I replied no without hesitation. Having grown up in a conservative home and having been educated in a Christian school, I always believed that homosexuality was considered one of the worst sins. On that day, my mother asked me the question I had struggled to, I had struggled to answer all my life. And on that day, I began the journey of identifying my sexuality and accepting myself for who I am. All right, that's a beautiful, powerful introduction. I'm wondering what, how this is gonna answer the question, commitment to a goal. So let's see, what, I'm not clear what the goal is right here. Is it, is it, I guess the goal is identifying your sexuality and accepting, okay. I'll go with it. Okay, so the goal is identifying your sexuality and accepting yourself for who you are. Okay, because of the bullying, my parents sent me to the U.S. to attend boarding school. In America, I was very careful about, I want to know where you attended boarding school. Tell us where you attended boarding school. And I mean the location, and you can also, if you want to, give us the name of the school. In America, I was very careful about how I presented myself, how I spoke, and how I walked. I didn't want to be bullied again. I wasn't yet sure of my sexuality, and so I hid my secret, hoping that it would eventually go away with intense prayer and fasting. However, by the end of high school, nothing had changed. 
This is a riveting story. It wasn't until college that I first met, let's say, um, let's say I first met an openly gay person. His name was Ed Chang and he happened to be my first college professor. I also met um, other gay students and realized for the first time that gays are no different from anyone else. After college, I started as a junior analyst at Goldman Sachs, where I went through intensive diversity training. Oh, wait. Okay. Um, okay, here I want to hear, I want to know, what are you feeling at this point? Probably a lot of relief. After college, I started, oh, also I want to know what you were feeling when your parents decided to send us send you to boarding school what are you thinking or feeling at this point it's very when you're telling a story to have a really good juicy story that really moves people you want to tell people what you and others in the story thought felt said and did you know how powerful it was for your mom are you gay my mother asked me because that's dialogue and that's we're hearing what she we're hearing some what she's saying and we can, we can feel your feelings. After college, oh, wait, we already read that. However, I was still struggling with my faith. I researched whether homosexuality was truly a sin and found convincing arguments on both sides. One day while browsing YouTube, I stumbled upon a clip covering a gay rights demonstration. There was a person holding a sign saying, the Lord is my shepherd and he knows I am gay. That was it. It was then that I realized God created me this way and I should be proud of who I am. After accepting myself, I became involved in Goldman. Okay, it was then, I, and I should be proud of who I am. So I want to know, I want to tell us what you are thinking and feeling at this point. After accepting myself, I became involved in Goldman Sachs LGBT network, helping with diversity recruiting. I joined the local LGBT swimming team. Oh, we'll say I also joined. However, my most meaningful experience has been through the Trevor Project, where I'm helping LGBTQ youth who are struggling with their identities. I respond to letters, most of which come from depressed youth with no one else to talk to. Wow, that's amazing. So I would want to know, um, how often do you respond to letters? Um, how many letters have you responded to? When do you take the time to do this? It has been very fulfilling helping young people struggling with the same issues I struggled with only recently, especially since I didn't have anyone to turn to myself. I have come a long way since that day my mother asked me if I was gay. As a child, I was bullied. As a teenager, I had a secret. As a young adult, I tried to change. It wasn't until I entered adulthood that I finally accepted myself for who I am. I am still not out to my family. Interesting. But I am confident of their love for me. So if my mother asks me again, are you gay? I will answer without hesitation. I sure am. And I'm proud to be. That was a very, very nice essay. Very memorable. And um, I liked it. So let's see where we are on the word count. We're at 534. So let's see if I can help you get rid of 34 words. Um, or, you know, at least. Actually, we're going to need to get rid of about... Um, I'm probably going to get need to get rid of about a hundred words so that you can add in the stuff that I asked you to add in. So let's see. Are you gay? My mother asked me when she heard I was being bullied at school. As a confused seventh grader, I replied no without hesitation. Having grown up in a conservative home and having been educated, let's say, having been grown up in a conservative home and educated in a Christian school, I believe that homosexuality was one of the worst sins. On that day, my mother asked me the question I had struggled to answer all my life, and I began the journey of identifying my sexuality and accepting myself for who I am. All right, saved you a few words in that first paragraph. Because of the bullying, my parents sent me to the U.S. to attend boarding school. In America, I was very careful about how I presented myself, how I spoke, and how I walked. Okay, so let's say I was very careful about how I spoke and how I walked because I didn't want to be bullied again. I wasn't yet sure of my sexuality and so I hid my secret. Let's just say I hid my secret hoping that it would eventually go away with intense prayer and fasting. However, by the end of high school, nothing had changed. Okay. It wasn't until college that I first met an openly gay person. Um, it wasn't until college that I first met an openly gay person. We don't need his name. 
Uh, see, it wasn't until college that I first met an openly gay person who happened to be my first college professor. I don't know what you mean by first, because it's not like you get, do you get, you don't get your college professors in order. You, I don't know what you mean by that. We'll just say who happened to be my college professor. I also met other gay students and realized for the first time, okay, and realized, I'm going to take out for the first time, because when we realize something, it's usually for the first time, so, and realize that gays are no different from anyone else. After college, I started as a junior analyst at Goldman Sachs, where I went through intensive diversity training. I learned that the firm celebrates the LGBT community. I also had the opportunity to meet senior leaders of the firm who are gay. Oh, wonderful. I, it was there that I realized being gay and being successful are not mutually exclusive. Wonderful. So let's say I also met senior leaders of the firm who are gay. However, I was still struggling with my faith. I researched whether homosexuality was truly a sin and found convincing arguments on both sides. One day while browsing YouTube, I stumbled upon a clip covering a gay rights demonstration. There was a person holding a sign saying, the Lord is my shepherd and he knows I am gay. That was it. It was then that I realized God created me this way and I should be proud of who I am. So I'm going to get rid of that was it just to give you some space. Um, after accepting myself, I became involved in Goldman Sachs LGBT network, helping with diversity recruiting. I also joined the local LGBT swimming team. Um, however, my most meaningful experience has been through the Trevor Project, where I'm helping LGBTQ youth who are struggling with their identities. We'll just say uh, LGBTQ youth. Give me some space. I respond to letters, most of which come from depressed youth with no one else to talk to. It has been very fulfilling helping young people struggling with the same issues I struggled with only recently, especially since I didn't have anyone to turn to myself. I have come a long way since that day my mother asked me if I was gay. As a child, I was bullied. As a teenager, I had a secret. As a young adult, I tried to change. It wasn't until I entered adulthood that I finally accepted myself for who I am. I am still not out to my family, but I am confident of their love for me. So if my mother asks me again, are you gay? I will answer without hesitation. I sure am, and I'm proud to be. All right, so let's see where we are. All right, we're at 492. Whew. We, the eight words is not enough for you to add in the thoughts and feelings I want you to add in. But I think it's time to move on. So I'm going to go ahead and move on. You can either leave your essay as it is, or you can respond to my comments and then take out some other stuff so that you can stay in the 500 word limit. But it was a very memorable essay. I really enjoyed reading it. Essay number three, joint degree. How do you expect the joint degree experience to benefit you on both a professional and a personal level? 400 words. So let's see how many words we have here. 490, all right. Um, so we gotta get at least 90 words out. Escaping from China in the midst of the Civil War, my grandfather arrived to Thailand with nothing but hope. Nice, strong introduction. Growing up, my father emphasized that Thailand had, has been a land of opportunity for our family and that we are indebted to it. Even though I moved to the U.S. for education at 14, my loyalty, love, and allegiance to my birth country remain unchanged, and I intend to devote my long-term career to Thailand's growth. With its advantageous geographic location, along with the abundant natural resources and skilled workforce, I see Thailand moving up from developing to developed country. To accomplish this goal, there must be transformational leaders in the public sector who create sound policies that encourage the development of the country. At the same time, there must be effective managers in the private sector to help lead Thai companies to the international stage. I want to fulfill both roles. After earning my degrees, I plan to work for an established private equity firm in Asia and leverage that experience to start my own firm in Thailand. As I better understand how business policies affect various sectors via my PE experience, I want to impact Thailand from a broader perspective as a policymaker in order to promote sustainable growth in the economy, which will help promote job creation. This is not, you have a, you have a comma there. At HBS, the international cases will help me to learn how to examine the local context when doing business in Asia, and the field method will prepare me to put theory into practice in an emerging country as a private equity investor. In addition, I would like to learn how to be an effective leader. At a GS forum, Professor Rob Kaplan explained that being a good leader is not about knowing the answer, but about asking the right question. This gives me a glimpse of what it is like to be in a classroom at HBS. 
With my aspiration to be a leader in the public and private sector in Thailand, HPS will provide the formal leadership training I need to learn how to ask the right questions. All right, so this is a huge little soliloquy on HBS, but you're applying to the Kennedy School with this essay, so I wouldn't recommend putting all that in there. Um, I would consider deleting this entire portion, um, or maybe just this much. Whenever I travel to Thailand, I make an effort to meet current policymakers. They have encouraged me to get a formal education in public policy, which is why I'm drawn to HKS. HKS will teach me to methodically analyze a public policy and how to create an effective one through classes such as economic analysis of public policy. I am also planning to attend seminars hosted by the Regulatory Policy Program at the Most of our Romney Center for Business and Government. I hope to learn to create and evaluate strategies to leverage the public and private sectors in the pursuit of public goals. My grandfather fulfilled his hope to establish his roots in Thailand. My father has benefited from the country's entrepreneurial spirit. I want to give back and ensure that other families can continue to fulfill their dreams in this quote-unquote land of opportunity. All right, so let's see where we are on word count when we remove that section that I removed. This was very well written, clear, and had energy and moved. 402, so we'll take away two words and this one will be done. Escaping from China in the midst of the Civil War, my grandfather arrived to Thailand with nothing but hope. Growing up, my father emphasized that Thailand has been a land of opportunity for our family and that we are indebted to it. Even though I moved to the U.S. for education at 14, my loyalty, love, and allegiance to my birth country remain unchanged, and I intend to devote my long-term career to Thailand's growth. With its advantageous geographic location, along with the abundant natural resources and skilled workforce, oops, I see Thailand moving up from developing to developed country. Let's just say I see Thailand becoming a... Mm, no, I leave it alone. To accomplish this goal, there must be transformational leaders in the public sector who create sound policies that encourage the development of the country. At the same time, there must be effective managers in the private sector to help lead Thai companies to the international stage. I want to fulfill both roles. After earning my degrees, I plan to work for an established private equity firm in Asia and, lead, and leverage that experience to start my own firm in Thailand. As I better understand how business policies affect various sectors via my PE experience, I want to impact Thailand from a broader perspective as a policymaker in, uh, in order to promote sustainable growth in the economy, which will promote job creating, creation. At HPS, the international cases will help me learn how to examine the local context when doing business in Asia and the field method will prepare me to put theory into practice in an emerging country as a private equity investor. Um, let's take, let's put this in a different place. Let's put it here. Whenever I travel to Thailand, I make an effort to meet current policymakers. They have encouraged me to get a formal education in public policy, which is why I'm drawn to HKS. Okay. We'll just take this out and then you'll be in the word count. All right, so that is the entire application. Um, and this essay, the, the joint degree one, comes in at um, 394 words, and that one's done. One point of concern I have is that the joint degree essay, as well as essay number two, are really written um, in a very fluid, native speaker sounding way and they are good and the first essay is good but it does not sound like it was written by a native speaker which I don't expect you to be because you are not you know you're from Thailand but it makes me concerned and I'm letting you know an admissions committee member would be concerned about this too that this was not written by the same person it looks like one person wrote essay one and a different person wrote essay two and three and maybe it's just that essay two and three have been worked more, they've been edited more, or you've gotten more feedback. I don't know, but I'm just letting you know that's what it looks like to me. Um, I like your vision for your career. I like the policy issues you want to affect. I think you have convincing arguments, but you need to have consistency between your essays so that it's all coming from the same applicant. So that's one red flag for me. But um, I really enjoyed reading and editing this 
application. I hope that it's helpful to other people who are applying to the Kennedy School and other top policy schools. Come visit me at theartofapplying.com to learn more about my services and how I might be able to help with your application. Thank you and goodbye.